Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we are looking at a data set of uh, TripAdvisor hotel reviews. And it's basically just a, a simple data set that has a review and a rating. And we're going to try to predict the rating based on the review. Uh, so let's get started. We're going to use a TensorFlow uh, recurrent neural network to make our predictions. Uh, we'll be using NumPy and Pandas to, just to work with the data. Um, reg regular expressions and the stop words from the Natural Language Toolkit uh, to process some of the reviews and turn it into a, um, a format that's readable by our model. And then uh, these will also be used for that purpose. Uh, tokenizer and pad sequences will allow us to uh, turn the review into a sequence of integers. And then uh, train test split as always and TensorFlow uh, to construct the model. So let's go ahead and import those and we're going to load in our data using pandas.readcsv. We get the data set right over here, just grab that CSV file, paste in the file path, take a look. So we have two columns, uh, 20,000 examples, uh, review it will be our input data and, and rating will be our labels. So let's just take a quick look to make sure we don't have any missing values. And we do not, so we're good to go. All right, so let's start processing the text. We want to turn each sequence, each review into a sequence uh, of unique integers, where each integer represents a different word. And so the way we'll start with that is first let's uh, process it a little. Uh, we can get the stop words uh, for English. Uh, these are a list of words um, that are not useful in making predictions. Uh, so stop words dot words English. Uh, if we take a look at that, you'll see it's just a bunch of very common words that aren't going to add much to our our model's uh, predictive ability. Uh, so let's um, remove them from the sequ the reviews here. So uh, let's make a function called process text uh, that'll take in a string called text and we'll first start by removing any digits so I'm using a uh, regular expressions substitutions uh, so, uh, we're going to substitute a regular expression of the form uh, backslash d plus which means uh, any digit any basically any number this is any digit character and this is one to unlimited times and we're going to replace it with a space and apply that to text uh, then we'll split text on white space to make it turn it into a list uh, sorry, uh, text.split. And then we'll rejoin it on whitespace. Uh, but we're only going to join, uh, so word for word in text, if word not in stop words. So we're only joining the words that are not stop words. So this will effectively remove stop words and also remove any digits. Okay, and then we'll return the text. So that'll be our function. And we're going to apply that to each of the reviews. So data sub review dot apply process text. Oh, I actually have to set that to the new review. And why not? Yeah, okay. Why don't we call this reviews, actually? Uh, this is what it looks like, though. It's now a panda series um, that uh, you can see. Uh, numbers have been removed and stop words have been removed. Uh, and you know what, actually, uh, to make it a little nicer, I'm, I'm going to make sure that the, instead of checking if the word is in stop words, let's first lowercase the word. And I'm pretty sure they're already lowercase, but just to make sure. And then strip off any white space and then we'll check. Okay, so that's our reviews. And then we want to turn it into a sequence of uh, of uh, integers. So for that we'll use Keras tokenizer, uh, which uh, let's specify a number of words. So it takes in a number of words. This is how many words do we want to use in our dictionary. And the reason I'm doing this is because there's actually a lot of unique words uh, in this data, data set. So I'm going to cap it at 10,000. We're only going to use the 10,000 most common words. So num words equals num words. I misspelled that. All right. And then we'll fit the tokenizer. So tokenizer.fit on texts, and we're going to fit it on reviews. So it's going to go through reviews, tally up all the different words, and then sort them in order of most common to least common, and assign them unique integers 
uh, where one will be the most common word, two will be the second most common, and so on. And we'll have that up to 10,000. Um, so then we will call tokenizer.texts to sequences. And why don't we store that in sequences? And we're going to pass in reviews. Uh, so now we will apply the fit that, uh, to the reviews and actually convert each word into a new integer. And it will become, they'll become lists of integers. All right, so let's take a look at that. What do sequences look like? Uh, so sequences should just be, okay, there are, it's a list of lists. And each list is a review, but the words have been encoded as integers. So each one of these is a word. Uh, let's actually get the longest, we, we want to get the longest sequence. And to get this, we can take the numpy.max to find the maximum value um, of sequences. Uh, but let's apply a lambda function to it. That will return the length of a given sequence. Uh, so this will, for a given sequence x, will will return the length of x. And so sequences, uh, th this function will be mapped to sequences. So uh, if we turn this into a list now, um, and take the max of the list, we'll get the longest sequence. Let's call that max sequence length. And why don't we just print it out once we get it. So the longest sequence is uh, 18. 133. Now let's create some inputs. This will be what we actually feed into our model. That's just going to be uh, the sequences but padded so that all of them are of length 1833. So we're going to use the pad sequences function from Keras that takes in sequences and a maximum length, max len, and that's going to be our max sequence length. And let's uh, specify padding as post so that the zeros go on the end. So yeah, uh, basically it'll be padded with zeros so that they all have the same length. And we'll run that and take a look. You can see now each sequence is uh, of uniform length. You can see they all have length 1833 and uh, they have zeros at the end for padding. All right, now let's encode the labels. Uh, so if we look at the ratings, which are our label values, if we look at the unique values in it, uh, you can see it's one through five. And if we actually look at the value counts for each one, we can see that most of them lie in uh, five. So um, I think because it's a bit skewed here and uh, our model probably won't do a very good job at uh, performing within each class. I mean, there's some things we can do to, pr to um, make it perform better. But I think I want to just uh, simplify the task for today and just try to predict uh, if a s given rating is five star or not. So we'll call it labels. And it's going to be the rating column with a lambda function applied. That's going to take in a given rating and it's going to, re going to return one if the rating is five and otherwise it will return zero. So it will just become a binary column of ones and zeros where one means it's a five star rating. Okay, so if we look at that now, you can see it's ones and zeros. And why don't we actually make it a NumPy array? I mean, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I'll keep this one on. Okay, now let's split the data. So we're going to use the, we're going to use the train to split function to split our inputs and our labels. So uh, we'll have train labels, no, train, train inputs, test inputs, train labels, test labels, equals train test split, uh, inputs, labels. And let's give it a train size of 70%. And we'll include a random state so we can reproduce the results. All right, uh, that's all we need to do. Now we are ready to model and train. So for this one, I'm going to use a, a GRU, bi-directional GRU, which is a um, 
it's a form of LSTM uh, or recurrent neural network that it's good at capturing time dependent time dependencies in the data. So because each sequence um, is, is time dependent, uh, a word has should be seen in context of the words behind it, and and in context of the words that come after it. Uh, and that's why we're doing bidirectional so that we can see past and future at the same time. Uh, so in order to do that, we want to embed our our integers. And the reason for that is uh, if we look at these sequences, each one of these words uh, is um, it's it's a unique word in I believe 10,000 is the number of different uh, words we have. And the problem is if we wanted to encode this as a vector, which we're going to have to if we're going to feed it into our model, each one of these will need a new vector. Um, they're going to be sent to, if we did a sparse encoding, like a one-hot encoding, uh, each vector would be of length 10,000, right? Because you'd have this one-hot vector of all zeros, 10,000 zeros, or uh, 9,999 zeros, and then uh, one, one wherever the word actually is. Uh, so that that's just a lot of features. We don't want 10,000 features in, a, in our data. Uh, and it wouldn't actually be 10,000 features. It would be um, sequence length by 10,000. So it would be a huge amount of data we're feeding in. And we just don't need that much. So what we'll do is perform a dense encoding using a uh, tf.keras.layers.embedding layer. And the embedding layer uh, we'll send each word to a vector in a vector space uh, with dimension of our choosing. So let's choose dimension for our vector space. Uh, embedding dimension. How about 128? And what we'll do is send each one of these words to a new location in 128 dimensional space. But um, the good thing is we don't have to worry about where to send them. Uh, th the where to send them is learned by the model in the embedding layer. So we'll specify an input dimension. That's going to be the dimension of a typical one-hot vector that's coming into the model. And that'll be num words, or 10,000. And then output dimension is the uh, dimension that we specified, which is embedding dimension. And then our input length uh, is going to just going to be max sequence length, or the length of a given uh, in sequence. And let's call this embedding. All right, now let's create uh, an input. So uh, inputs equals tf.keras.input. And let's we'll pass in the shape. Shape is going to be a vector of length, max sequence length. And then we're going to pass inputs into embedding. OK, so now we have these embedded uh, representations of the words. We can now feed those into a GRU. So tf.keras.layers.gru. It's our gated recurrent unit. Um, and we're going to specify a number of units, 128. And we're going to enable return sequences. So uh, having this on will return um, the sequence at each time step. If you want to know more about this, uh, you should look up how GRUs work. They're very cool. Um, but this will not return a single vector. It will return a matrix of for each uh, for each sequence. OK, so. Uh, we also want to make this bidirectional. So I'm going to wrap it in a bidirectional layer. All right, and we're going to pass in the embeddings. And because this returns a matrix, um, we're going to have to flatten it afterwards. So I'm going to make a flatten layer. That's just going to take in the output from GRU. All right, and then we'll feed that into outputs which will be just a, a dense layer to make our predictions. Uh, and it's going to have one activation with sigmoid activation, which will, this, will, this one value will just be our output uh, as a probability of how likely the review is to be five star. And we're going to pass in flatten. All right, then let's create the model, tf.keras.model, passing in inputs and outputs. And we can plot the model. Uh, using tf.keras.utils.plotmodel and pass in model. All right, let's take a look. Oh no, it should be output dim. Sorry. All right, and you can see our, our inputs come in, get embedded, get sent through the GRU, 
hit flattened, and then send to our final output. All right, so now let's compile the model. Uh, we'll use an atom optimizer. Uh, for loss, we'll do binary cross entropy, since we're only predicting between two classes. Metrics, uh, how about we use accuracy and AUC, area under the rock curve. All right, and now let's uh, let's fit the model and store it in history, store the results in history. So model.fit, and we're going to train it on train, uh, what was it, train inputs, train labels. Now let's give it a validation, some validation data. So validation split of 20%. And then let's give it a batch size of 32. Number of epochs can be 20. Uh, I'm going to do extra epochs. Usually for a GRU, it's done training after one or two epochs if we're using a small data set like this. Uh, so I'm going to train it for more epochs than we need and use a callback, uh, which is early stopping callback, tf.keras.callbacks. Uh, early stopping. And that's going to monitor a given value. So monitor uh, validation loss. Actually, why not we do accuracy? Um, and when va when the accuracy stops going up, it's going to check. Well, if it stops going up for a given number of epochs, in this case, let's say two. So if it goes for uh, two epochs without the validation accuracy improving, it'll stop the training and it will restore the, the weights from the best epoch. So restore best weights equals true. All right, we'll run that. Uh, and I might want to enable GPU acceleration because GRUs can be uh, a bit slow. Uh, so why don't I do that? I'll actually stop this. I will enable GPU acceleration. And I will run the notebook again. Uh, this may take just a few minutes, so I will pause the video and return to you when it's done. All right, so it finished training. And if we go ahead and evaluate the model, on the test set, uh, actually uh, test labels, uh, test inputs, and test labels. Just get the results here. Uh, yeah, you can see even just evaluating the test set, it's taking uh, quite a while. Um, but that's okay. Um, you can see we're getting an accuracy of about 80%, uh, 79%, and an AUC of 0.87. So that's pretty good. Um, uh, that will conclude today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content, and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.